Why am I not growing? It is a question many teens ask and their parents worry about. I'm talking today about why teens might not be growing and four areas you can focus on to make sure you're not interfering with your growth and you're actually helping your growth along so that you can be uh, the size you are supposed to be genetically. Hey everyone, I'm Jill Castle. I'm a pediatric dietitian and host of this channel. If this is your first time here, give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm talking about and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time I release a new video. So we're talking today about why teens aren't growing well. And this is a sensitive topic. I know a lot of teens worry about whether they've hit their growth spurt or whether they are optimizing their growth spurt. So we're gonna clear some of that up today and focus on some of the nutrition, sleep, and activity things you can be focused on to make sure you're optimizing that period of time, that growth spurt that I know you're waiting for or you're possibly in the throes of. The four things we're gonna talk about today is number one, how much protein do you actually need on a given day? What is sort of the minimum requirement? And I'll talk a little bit about overdoing protein. Secondly, I'm going to talk about how to space your protein out throughout the day because your body really likes to have sort of a consistent exposure to protein throughout the day. Thirdly, we will talk about how much sleep you're getting and make sure you are on track with sleep and fourthly, I will talk about physical activity. Some of you are probably super duper physical. Others of you might not be physical or might not be active at all. And that's something we need to talk about. Okay, number one, let's talk about protein. So many, many of you think that you just need to eat more protein and that's gonna help you grow. Well, we know that when you overdo protein, your body is just going to turn it into fat and store it on your body. It's excess calories. So we want to make sure that you get enough protein to grow and develop, uh, but we don't want to overdo protein. So how much do you need? Half a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you need to eat at least 50 grams of protein per day. If you weigh 150 pounds, you need to eat at least 75 grams of protein per day. And if you weigh 200 pounds, you need to eat at least 100 grams of protein per day. Now, most research will tell you not to go more than a gram of protein per pound a day. So again, you weigh 100 pounds, don't go over 100 grams of protein per day. Why? Again, because it becomes excessive, your body can't use it and it can turn it into fat and store it in your fat cells on your body uh, for later use. Basically, protein ends up being calories and if you're overdoing calories, it doesn't matter if those calories are coming from junk food, protein, grains, or fat. If it's too much, your body is going to perceive it as too much turn it over into something it can store, and that is generally fat. So no hard and fast rules about how much protein. Really the guidelines are make sure you meet the minimum. So if you're a kid or a teen who doesn't eat meat, you wanna make sure you're paying a little bit more attention to the protein sources that you are eating. So you may be wondering what are the food sources of protein? I'll give you a hint. It's mostly animal sources, but we do have some plant sources of protein. When we're talking about animal sources, we're talking about meats and products made from animals like dairy products. Those are going to be pretty rich in protein. So meats, chicken, fish, yogurt, eggs, milk, those items are going to to be pretty good sources of protein. So when we look at the meat category or chicken or fish, you get about seven grams of protein per ounce of meat, chicken, or fish. In the dairy category, if we're talking about milk 
or yogurt. When we look at a cup of just regular yogurt or regular cow's milk, we're talking about eight grams of protein per cup. Now, if you're thinking, I don't drink cow's milk, I, I only eat Greek yogurt, two things. Greek yogurt's always going to have more protein. So it can have upwards of 12 to 15 grams of protein per cup. Plant-based milks vary. Things like soy milk or pea protein milk are going to have a higher protein content than something like an almond milk or a rice milk. They're going to be very low in, in protein content. There are a whole lot of other foods you can get protein from though. Grains, yep, pasta, oats, uh, brown rice, quinoa, they all have a little bit of protein in them, so that's good news. Uh, we know beans and nuts also have protein in them, and even some vegetables like corn and peas have a little bit of protein. So you can find protein in a wide variety of foods. So you don't necessarily have to worry about getting enough protein. In fact, if we look at research in kids and teens about their protein intake, most kids and teens are getting plenty of protein without even trying up to two to three times what is recommended for them to consume on a daily basis. So really it's not a question of am I getting enough? It's a question of am I getting good quality protein? So make sure you're looking at your diet. If you're eating chips and uh, microwave mac and cheese, or you're hitting the fast food restaurant all the time, the quality of that protein may not be as good as it could be. So that's an area where you can work on. Okay, the second area is smooth out your protein intake throughout the day. Don't lump it all at the end of the day, at dinner time, for example. What is most beneficial for your body, and we see this in some of the sports nutrition research, is that your body does best when it's getting protein throughout the day. So your whole internal metabolic system, your organs, your bloodstream is seeing sort of regular injections of protein throughout the day. What does that mean? It means have a little bit of protein at breakfast time, have a little protein at lunch, have a little bit at dinner time as well. Try to spread out your protein throughout the day rather than have a ton of it at breakfast and don't have anything again until dinner time. We don't want to do that. I want you to smooth your protein out throughout the day and try to space it as evenly as possible. So that means even your snacks have a little pop of protein with snack time as well. Okay, number three, let's talk about sleep. So we know that teens tend to go to bed later and get up later. Uh, that whole circadian rhythm shifts to later in the evening, which kind of throws everything off, uh, not only for teenagers themselves, but for their parents also. But it doesn't necessarily matter that you're going to bed later if you can get up later. Where it gets to be kind of a problem is if you're going to bed later and getting up early for school and shortchanging your total sleep time. So what is the total sleep time that is recommended? Eight to 10 hours in a 24 hour window. So if you can stay up to 11 and you don't have to get up till seven or eight the next morning, you are a-okay. However, if you're staying up till midnight and you've got to get up at six in the morning, that's only six hours of sleep and you are falling short on the recommended sleep time. Why is this a big deal? Because when you sleep is when growth hormone, the hormone that regulates and actually spurs your growth, that's when it is pushed out into your body when you're asleep. So we want to make sure you're getting that eight to 10 hours of sleep so that your growth hormone can circulate throughout your body, do what it's supposed to do, and promote the growth that you're supposed to experience during your teenage years. And number four, your physical activity. Yep, 
we're going there. If you want to grow well, you need to be moving your body every single day. The recommendations are 60 minutes a day. So, and it's 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity. So what does that mean? Moderate activity can be um, dusting the house as a chore or running the vacuum cleaner. It can be going for a brisk walk. It can be shooting basketballs out in the driveway. There's lots of moderate activities that you can do that can qualify for that 60 minute moderate to vigorous activity each day. Vigorous activity is things like running, swimming, riding your bike, taking an aerobics class, practicing soccer for the soccer team. Those are more vigorous physical activities that you don't have to do every day. Remember the recommendation is 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a day. So you can be in that range of moderate on some days, vigorous on other days. The recommendation is to try to be vigorously active three days a week. So maybe you have a Peloton and you're hopping on the Peloton bike and taking a spin class, or maybe it's a combination of different things. Maybe three days a week you have swim practice and that's you're all set with that vigorous physical activity component. But there is a little bit more to this recommendation than just focusing on aerobic activity. They are also asking you to focus on bone strengthening and muscle strengthening activities at least three days a week. So it gets a little bit confusing, but as long as you can be moderate to vigorously active three days a week and work in some strength training component or bone building component. So when we talk about bone building versus strength building, strength building is really making your muscles stronger. Your muscles may not necessarily get bigger until you're really a little bit older in your teen years, but your muscles can get stronger. So that might be just push-ups, sit-ups, squats, things that are just giving your muscles some resistance and working on strengthening them. Bone building exercise, things like jumping, running, that pounding motion that is oftentimes part of playing a sport, helps your bones get stronger, denser, and harder. And so when you think about the physical activity recommendations, a lot of that vi moderate to vigorous physical activity will already incorporate some of the strength building and the bone building components, particularly if your activity incorporates running or jumping, for example. But the bottom line is if you want to be growing well, you want to hit your growth spurt and hit it with a good stride and really kind of clip along with the right nutrition and the right healthy lifestyle habits that are going to support good growth, you need to focus on what you're eating, how often you're exercising, and how much sleep you're getting. Those are my top four recommendations. Top three overall though is Get good nutrition, make sure you're getting enough protein and you're spreading it out through the day. Make sure you're getting enough sleep and make sure you're moving your body every single day. It doesn't have to be hardcore, but you do wanna move, do some sort of physical activity on a daily basis. So that's it. If you're wondering why you're not growing, worried that you're not growing enough, these are some things you can start to focus on and optimize in your day-to-day -day routine to make sure you've set the stage for awesome growth through your teenage years. Again, I'm Jill Castle. If you like what you heard today, hit the like button, subscribe below, and I will see you next time.